Ciao and welcome to English with Archie. Oggi, questo è il mio primo video rivolto ai miei spettatori italiani. And what will we do? What will we learn? Vedremo diverse espressioni italiane che hanno uno corrispondente in inglese. Quindi saranno facilissimi per voi a imparare. Iniziamo! La prima frase oggi è è come cercare un ago in un pagliaio. Come si dice questa frase in inglese? È molto simile. We say, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. E cosa significa questa frase? Do quanto ne so, è la stessa cosa. We use it when we are looking for something and it's very difficult to find. Usually something small in a very big place. The example is, I was trying to find a specific stall at the market, but there were 300. It was like looking for a needle in a haystack. In Italiano sarebbe, stavo provando di trovare una, una bancarella specifica al mercato, ma ce n'erano 300. Era come cercare un ago in un pagliaio. So, we can also use the words trying to find or searching for. Questi sono diversi modi di dire la stessa cosa. Provare a trovare, cercare, etc. Questa è la prima frase. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Adesso voglio che voi pensiate se, um, se foste in questa situazione, che fareste voi? Come um, trovereste questo ago? Ho diverse opzioni. Okay, first of all, we could burn the haystack and only the needle would remain. So, potremmo bruciare il pagliaio e solo l'ago rimarrebbe. Ma se, se fossi un contadino non sarebbe un'opzione bella bruciare tutto il tuo pagliaio. Uh, quindi, che cosa, che cosa altro possiamo fare? Um, we could remove the hay piece by piece. Remuovere pezzo per pezzo, pezzo alla volta, um, il, uh, il fieno. But um, we have better things to do. We have better things to do, okay? Um, let's not do that, okay? <laughs> uh, and number three, what's the third option? Don't bother. Non fare niente. Non prendere la briga. Don't bother. Yeah, I think that's the best option for me. What would you do? Do you have another idea? You can write it in the comments. So let's look at our next phrase. La nostra seconda espressione è essere al settimo cielo. Come si dice questa frase in inglese? To be in seventh heaven. To be in seventh heaven. And what does it mean? It means the same thing. It means to be very, very happy. And where does this phrase come from? Da dove viene questa, questa espressione? In Islam and in Judaism, the highest level of heaven is the seventh level. La, il livello più alto del paradiso è il settimo livello. So, if you're in seventh heaven, you're in the best place. You feel extremely happy. Let's have an example. Jack was in seventh heaven when his granny made him his favorite dessert and custard. Giacomo era al settimo cielo quando sua nonna gli ha fatto il suo dolce preferito e custard. Custard, non so come si dice in italiano. Custard is a sauce, um, yellowish and sweet. È una salsa giallastra e dolce um, that we put on desserts in England. Che mettiamo, mettiamo sui dolci um, in Inghilterra. It's a typical English um, thing that we have with desserts. And it's very yummy. It's very yummy. So if you come to England, you should try it. Also, you can get um, donuts with custard inside, which I like. Le ciambelle con custard dentro. È molto buono. 
Okay, so our next expression. This cat is in seventh heaven. The next expression is, the grass is always greener on the other side. The grass is always greener on the other side. This time I gave you the English expression. The Italian expression is a little different. What is it? L'erba del vicino è sempre più verde. This is a new expression for me in Italian. Questa è una nuova espressione per me. E mi piace. È un po' diverso. Se traducemmo la frase esattamente in inglese, sarebbe The neighbor's grass is always greener. Ma il significato della nostra frase, the grass is always greener, on the other side, è lo stesso. When we look at other people and what they have, it looks great. Or we look at maybe a different job or a different um, way of living, a different country, and it all looks better over there. But in reality, it's not. In reality, it's not. They think the same when they look back at us, or our country, or our place, or our job. So for example, my friend always said life was easier in Scotland. He then moved there, but I don't think he's happier. Il mio amico sempre diceva che la vita era più facile, più semplice, in Scozia. Um, poi si è trasferito lì, ma io penso che non sia più fe felice adesso. Quindi possiamo dire the grass is always greener on the other side. La prossima espressione italiana che mi piace tantissimo ed è, ed è nuovo per me è hai voluto la bicicletta? Adesso pedala! <laughs> ok? We don't have this expression in English, but we have another expression with the same meaning. Almeno da quanto ne so, il significato è lo stesso, ma puoi dirmi se, se io sbaglio. What is the English expression? It is, you've made your bed, now lie in it. You made your bed, now lie in it. We can say you've made or you made, but it's the same. So, what does it mean? It means you must accept the consequences of your actions. Dovete accettare le conseguenze delle vostre azioni. So, an example would be She said she wanted a divorce. Now she wants to get back together again. I told her, you made your bed, now lie in it. Le ha detto che voleva un divorzio, adesso Vuole unirsi a me di nuovo. Gli, le ho detto, hai fatto il tuo letto, adesso straiati. Ok? Puoi ricordare questa frase in italiano. Hai fatto il tuo letto, adesso straiati. E sarebbe più facile ricordarla in inglese. The next phrase is rompere il ghiaccio. Come si dice questa frase in inglese? We say... Break the ice. Break the ice. What does it mean? It means to make people feel more relaxed, usually at a party or at a meeting. The origin of this phrase is from when icebreaker ships were invented to travel across the polar regions of the globe. So, l'origine di questa frase erano, era quando erano inventati questi navi per rompere il ghiaccio per attraversare le regioni polari. And breaking the ice helps us to get through a social situation easily. So, for example, there was an awkward silence between the guests, so Lucy decided to break the ice. What is the most effective way of breaking the ice? What do you think? If you have a suggestion, write it below. The next phrase is sputa il rospo, sputa il rospo. The phrase in English isn't exactly the same. It is spit it out, spit it out. And it means when we want to tell someone to hurry up in saying something, to hurry up and say what they want to say. 
vogliamo spiegare a un'altra persona di raccontare le cose che vuole, vuole raccontare. For example, we could say, hurry up, spit it out, what did you want to tell me? This could be a bit rude, può essere un po' maleducato, so we have to use it in the right context. Se siamo un po' seccati, un po' arrabbiati, e se ci rivolgiamo a una persona che conosciamo bene. So, if we're a bit annoyed, if we're a bit frustrated, and we are talking to someone that we know, or someone we know well. The next phrase is colto con le mani nel sacco. Um, the corresponding phrase in English is a bit different. It's caught red-handed. Caught red-handed. What does it mean? It means someone is caught when they are committing a crime or doing something bad. Often it is when someone is stealing something. E che cosa è l'origine di questa frase? L'origine viene dal uh, inglese scozzese. And when we think of red-handed, what does that mean? It means with blood on someone's hands. If you have blood on your hands, then you were caught in the middle of a murder. È ricolto con le mani con sangue addosso. Quindi è ricolto nel mezzo di fare un riatto. So, this phrase we can use, for example, in The bank has camera footage of him stealing the necklace. Caught red-handed. La banca ha una ripresa di lui um, che stava rubando la colana. Caught red-handed. Or we can use it in a, a lighter way. We could say, I saw her stealing my chicken from the fridge. I caught her red-handed. L'ho vista mangiando il mio pollo dal frigorifero. L'ho colta con le mani rossi. I caught her red-handed. Okay, so our next phrase. La prossima espressione è tanto di capello, tanto di capello. Come si dice questa frase in inglese? Diciamo, hats off, hats off, hats off to you, hats off to him. So, when do we use it? When someone has achieved something. When they have usually worked hard and achieved a good result. It's another way of saying, well done. So, for example, I heard about your promotion, hats off. Or, hats off to all of you for getting good grades. Tanto di capello a tutti voi per aver ottenuto gli ottimi voti. The last expression today in Italian is tale madre, tale figlia. Or tale padre, tale figlio, eccetera. So how do we say this in English? Like mother, like daughter. Like father, like son. Like father, like daughter, etc. So when do we use this? We use it to say that a son is like his father, or a daughter is like her mother, or a daughter is like her father, etc. For example, she's doing very well at school, like mother, like daughter. Per dire, um, è molto in gamba, molto come sua madre. Or another example would be, he never talks about how he's feeling, like father, like son, I suppose. Non parla mai dei propri sentimenti. Come padre, come figlio, suppongo. Tale padre, tale figlio, suppongo. Okay, so that's our last phrase today. Like father, like son. Like mother, like daughter. So which of these phrases did you already know? And which ones are new to you? Now the best way to learn words and phrases in English is to use them. So, I want you to choose one of these phrases and try and use it in a conversation in English this week. If you don't have someone to talk to in English, you can always write in the comments below here, or there are thousands of different apps you can find on your phone to find native speakers to practice with and talk with. So, thanks very much for joining me. Grazie mille per aver partecipato e alla prossima. See you next time. Spero che vi sia piaciuto questo video, fammi sapere se sì e vi farò più video con l'italiano e un pizzico di inglese nel futuro. Grazie mille e a presto. Ciao!